Ooh, yeah. Hey everyone, check out this new bit of kit I just picked up. This is a flash unit for professional photographers, and this is one of the most powerful that's ever been made, uh, apparently. This is a Speedotron 4803, and basically inside that box there's a power supply and a lot of capacitors, and then the cable runs out to the flash unit, and check out the size of that flash tube. Yikes. So the, the thing has the capability of dumping 4,800 joules in a single flash through that flash tube. And uh, I've been interested in, in really, really powerful flash lamps for a while, but someone recently posted a comment uh, about Doc Ed Edgerton's um, aerial photography at night. <laughs> so there's a flash tube they built in, I think, World War II and put on a plane and then flew the plane around and actually took flash photography from the air. So I don't know if I'm going to get that high. I think they were in the region of about 50 to 75 kilojoules per flash, and this is 4.8 kilojoules. So it's yeah, about an order of magnitude away, but uh, my plan is to open up this box and add some capacitors and kind of play with it and see how much power we can really get. So uh, all right, let's, let's, let's see what it looks like stock. I'm, I'm kind of going to get behind the flash lamp so that I don't have the flash lamp exposed to the camera array, and I'm going to press the test button here. This is a full 4800 watt second flash. So I mean clearly I, I, I can see on the back of the camera that it's probably just a white frame, but nonetheless it is bright. Uh, we'll do some demonstrations later showing how much heat actually comes off of it. Uh, but if you put so, like a black piece of plastic in front of that flash unit and pulse it, it, it actually melts the plastic a little bit. So this unit has a top and a bottom half, and the bottom half had uh, wood screws holding it to something, and the top half had machine screws. And since I've already got this thing open, I just put it back together for the camera. Uh, don't bother with the wood screws. If you want to take this apart, just take off the machine screws that are in the top section, and then you can lift this off, and there's enough cabling inside so you can actually put this down and not have to disconnect the cables while you're balancing the lid and stuff. All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, we've got capacitors in the bottom and circuitry in the top. And the capacitors are all nicely bussed together with those uh, galvanized bus bars. And there's quite a bit of circuitry in here. There's a fair bit more than I was expecting. So I discharged the caps and then uh, tipped this over to kind of get the caps out a little bit. And as you can see, they're custom labeled caps. They're even labeled Speedatron. And from the model number 2000-450, I'm pretty certain that would be 2000 microfarads at 450 volts. And if you do the math, uh, each cap has a storage of about 202 joules, one half CV squared. And there's 24 of these caps in here, so that's 4860 joules. So that actually works out just about right, so that, that makes sense. Uh, the charging scheme is a little bit interesting. Uh, let me let me show you the uh, circuit in the inside. The front panel of this machine has different plugs for different power settings, and so the way that you actually direct um, a more or less power to your strobe is just to unplug it and plug it into a different spot on the front. And there are spots for 800, 1600, 2400, and then if you combine the last one, it's 4800 for the for the combined set. So this a bus bar arrangement sort of makes sense. It looks like 1800, 1600. Uh, and you put these together, it's 2400, and then this is another 2400, and so you get 48 for the whole pack. So you can see all the capacitor banks connect into that circuit board there, and I see a whole bunch of diodes in there, which originally I thought was might have been a voltage uh, doubler ladder, but no, I think that's probably just for charging, so the thing can charge individual cap banks without uh, worrying about the voltage from all of them. Also notice those two really large resistors in there. Uh, that might be a way that they reduce the inrush current when the cap bank starts charging. Hey, I got this wrong. So actually on this half of the box, these caps are all uh, negative common, and this half is all positive common, which makes sense so that this thing probably does charge the caps at 450 volts and then discharges them in series at 900. So that also makes sense why this, this section here would be uh, 1600 and this would be another 800, and that would give you 24. So they always want to have two halves of the box, top and bottom, to get the voltage doubling. So you can't have 3200 because that combination is not possible. It has to be 800, 
16 or 24 or 48. Let me show you how much power this flash has. I have a little piece of plastic garbage bag. I haven't measured the thickness, but it's, it's awfully thin. You can almost see light through it. So I'm going to put this under the flash lamp and um, look away from it while I'm flashing, while I press the button. So we're going to have the full 4800 going into it. And the, uh, the plastic sort of melts onto the dust that was on the table there and shrinks quite a bit because it was sort of instantly melted and then it re-solidifies re very quickly because it's so thin. Let's try another shot. While it's still hot, the plastic is quite soft and stretchy. Here's a piece of very dark paper. It's fairly heavy, like magazine weight paper. And I'll put it uh, black side up. It doesn't catch on fire, but it's kind of bubbly and crackly. I don't know if you can see that. It's sort of nicely textured. Let's try a couple of shots on it. I also put the, um, the charger into rapid cycle mode, so it's pulling quite a bit more current to recharge the cap bank, and it recharges in about, I don't know, four seconds now. It's kind of... Um, Oh, actually, wait a minute. Maybe this could be cool. It's kind of delaminating. It feels like there's two layers to this paper. Let's try this piece of coroplast. This is a really lightweight uh, plastic that's very absorptive of light. It's, it's nice and warm. I mean, it's hard to appreciate how much energy this thing is dumping in such a short amount of time. It, it basically feels like this thing was laying out in the sun all day. Maybe we'll try a couple of shots, kind of in a row. Maybe you can see it's kind of uh, curved now, since the top section is heated up so much more than the bottom, it causes the plastic to expand and then the piece bends a little bit. It's kind of neat. How about some really fine steel wool? This is, I think, 4 aught. A little nice trail of smoke. Anyway, so it's not quite as powerful as I originally expected, but that, that's kind of the whole point of this project. Um, my, my ultimate plan here is to replace some or all of the capacitors and in the bank here and just use their charging and firing circuit and maybe also change the lamp. I've got a line on some even higher power xenon strobes. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll be getting up close to the 10 kilowatt or 10 kilojoule range pretty soon. Um, also a better reflector to focus the energy to a smaller spot. There's also a lot of other really cool things that you could do with this. Um, Ruby laser rods and YAG laser rods. <clears throat> Those would be really cool to experiment, especially since the flash tube is already in a helix. Alright, see you next time. Bye.